Y'all blessed us this afternoon? Yes. yes. Amen. As this brother here would say, it's really caught on to me too, but it's just, I'm blessed by the best. Amen. 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 We serve a good God. Amen. Amen. And like we've been talking about, God is bigger than our circumstances. He's bigger than our problems. And not only that, but He loves us so much that He's got enough to do something about it. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you look at this, is something I'm very proud of. The Holy Spirit gave me this, but. And this is something we should always do when we come in here. If you look at your program, at the very bottom it says this. There's a double asterisk and it says this. It says, this program is subject to change by leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen? What does that mean? When we come up in here, yeah, this program is good. It's a great guideline that we thank God for. But we have to realize when we come in here, God, it's about you. So God, whatever you want to do when you come in here, God, we lay down our agendas at the altar. And God, whatever you want to do through me. God, we're here for you. Amen? Amen. And with that being said, let us boldly go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we, we honor you, O oh God. We, we, we exalt you, O oh God, in this afternoon, O oh God. We acknowledge your presence, O oh God, today. God, we pray oh, right now in Jesus' name for the ones who are here, for the ones who are on, our, on their way. God, when we come through the door, we pray, O oh God, that we empty ourselves out, O oh God. Whatever you want to do, God, we are here for you. Dear God, we welcome you into this place. We build a mercy seat for God to you to, to sit down and dwell and come among us, oh God. Have your way, oh God, this Christmas Eve. And have your way, oh God, in our hearts and in our lives and in our minds. Have your way. Transform the, the masses, oh God, today, oh God. We pray, oh God, deliver our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Have your way, O oh God, today. Minister, God, to the total and entire being, dear God, of today. And in Jesus' name, we thank you and give you praise. People of God said, Amen. 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 Give God a God's hand. Praise.
our fellowship and meet and greet. Welcome everybody to the service because God is good. Amen. Yeah. And praise God.
Romans chapter 2. Chaplain Santiano was hoping to be here today. He was looking forward to being here with you today. He is kind of broken hearted. He is not here with you today. He got called early this afternoon to go on a hero mission. And uh, to pay proper honor and respect to Paul and Paul. That's where he's at now. And it's all getting me as a feeling. Let's see what the Lord has for us. Amen. Matthew chapter 2, we'll be reading verses 1 through 18. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country, another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have read your word. We pray now, Lord, that you would meet with us. And bring our hearts and minds to meet with you. Lord, we have praised your name in song. We have praised your name in prayer. We are your children. Lord, here at Christmas time, thinking about the birth of your son, the greatest gift we could ever have, tune our hearts and minds to understand more of your gift and to properly respond to you. We ask that you speak through us, Lord. In Christ's name we ask of your Father. Amen. Amen. You see? We see here in Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus some very interesting things. And what we're going to look at in this chapter, in this passage of scripture here, we're going to look at four different kinds of people and how they respond in four different ways to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to see now people. We're going to see needy people. We're going to see negative people. And we're going to see knowledgeable people. And those are four separate responses that not only do we see in this chapter and back then, but we see those same types of responses to the Lord Jesus Christ today. We're going to look at this. There's a couple 
categories it's okay to find yourself in. And there's a couple categories. If you're in those categories, you're on dangerous ground. And we pray that the Lord will speak to our hearts today. Help us look in the mirror of His Word and see where we are and help move us to where we need to be. We're going to look at now people, needy people, negative people, and knowledgeable people. All responding or failing to respond to the Lord. Now let's look first at the now people. Those are sweet. Those are good folks to have around. Those folks please the Lord all the time. Mary and Joseph are now people. And we call them now people because when the Lord tells them something, they respond right now. They respond right now. Let's look at verse 13 and verse 15. And when they were parted, being the wise men, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child and destroy him. Now look in the next verse and see what Joseph does. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Now how refreshing is that? God tells him to do something, and the first thing in the morning when he gets up, he does it. He does it. How sweet is that? You know, the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, they were now people. The angel came to them in the middle of the night, said, guess what? There's a beautiful thing going on. The Lord is bringing you a Savior. He's Christ the Lord. He's appearing he's in Bethlehem right now. And oh, by the way, uh, it wasn't good enough to have one angel have all the fun of announcing the baby's birth. All the rest of them out of heaven had to bust out and come down there and sing too. Saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That goodwill toward men was from God. Okay. Uh, and the shepherd said, hey, these sheep will be here tomorrow. Let's go see this. This is different. Let's go see it. They dropped what they were doing and they went right now to go see what God was doing in their life. How many folks in here supervise soldiers? Airmen, whatever. Isn't it sweet to have somebody on your team that's a now person? You tell them to do something and they just they just go do it, right? No debate, no delay, no him all around. They just do it. How sweet is it to God when we respond to God right now? What kind of children must we look like to God when God tells us something and we respond right now? That's got to be sweet to his heart. The Bible is full of now people. Abraham was a now person. You know, God does great things with now people. He chooses to do a lot of things with now people. God went to Abraham. Book of Genesis said, Abraham, I'll make you a deal. God was recruited. <laughs> Abraham, I'll make you a deal. You follow me. You don't know where you're going. I want you to sign up for an open-ended rotation. <laughs> I'll let you know when you get there. I want you to leave your family, leave everything you know, and you just come follow me. If you do that, I'll make you a great nation. I don't care that you're about 80 years old right now. You're going to have lots of children. You're going to be the father of a great nation. And I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. Amen. You just follow me. Abraham told his wife, Sarah, and bless her heart. What a conversation that must be. <laughs> I'm going to leave mom and daddy I'm going to do what and she said okay she went they were now people God told them to do something they get up and they do it right now uh, Moses was a now person Joshua was a now person Samuel when Samuel was a young child was hearing God call out to him he gets up in the middle of the night goes to see Eli Eli tells him it wasn't me it's the Lord and when the Lord calls you again, you respond. The Lord called out to him the third time in the night, Samuel. And he says, speak, Lord, thy servant here. He's ready to respond right now. Peter had some faults, but Peter was a now person. When Peter and the other disciples were rowing the boat across the Sea of Galilee one night, Jesus said, you guys go ahead, I'll meet you there. And in the middle of the night, Jesus is walking across the water. He's going to meet him to the other side because he's got a schedule with you. And they look at him out there, and they have a debate. Among the disciples, is that a ghost or is that the Lord? And, and they call out to him, if you're the Lord, bid us to come out to you. 
And Jesus says, come on out. Jesus, Peter got up out of the boat right then and now and started walking on the water. Now later he got a little bit scared, got wet. But when Jesus first called, he responded, right now. So we see God doing wonderful things with Mary and Joseph here in this chapter because they are now people. You know, Jesus in John chapter 14 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. When we look at ourselves in the mirror of God's scripture, ask ourselves, are we now people? Is God calling you to do something or calling you to not do something or to stop doing something? Wouldn't it be sweet if we just respond right now? Now, it was important that they respond right now because there was danger out there. Herod is looking to kill you. And I want you to get up and go and head out to Egypt right now. You see, God knows what is down the road and around the corner where we can't see. When God is telling us to do something, or when God is telling us to not do something, or to stop doing something, it's not because God is sitting up there, man, he's having too much fun, I'm going to stop that. It's because God is up there looking around. They're about to get hurt. They're about to run into some pain. They're about to hurt themselves or somebody else. And I need to stop that. So they call down, God calls down to us and says, son, daughter, this is what I want you to do. And you need to respond now. When God wants you to respond to Him, because He loves you. That's right. You know? Uh, how many folks here are parents? You see your child getting ready to wander out in the street. Do you want them to respond on their own timetable, or do you want them to respond right now? And you want them to respond right now because you love them. You care about them. They don't see the cars going up and down the street. They don't see the danger. We get out there and we play with sin or we come around to our own plans, our own ideas and our own life. God sees the danger. And He loves us enough to try to tell us to go something, do something else. And to talk to us about it. And He wants us to respond right now. That's the sweetest way to respond. Joseph and Mary were now people. The shepherds in Luke chapter 2 were now people. And it pleases God so much when we respond right now. And we're in a better place, a better blessing if we respond right now. It is in your interest, brother and sister, to be a now person with God. Because God loves you. He wants you to be a now person. Now there's some other people here in this chapter. There are some needy people. And they are sweet. They're in a place where God can do something with them. Because they recognize their need to be with Jesus. The wise men in this chapter are needy people. Verse 1 and 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. They realized they had a need. Their need was to worship the Lord. They needed to be with Him. You know how bad these wise men needed to be with the Lord? They needed to be with Him so bad, ladies, they stopped and asked directions. <laughs> they said, He's a king. He should be in Jerusalem. Where is He? We're come to see Him. We're come to worship with Him. We want to love Him. We have gifts to give Him. We have a need. You know how bad they need? They travel two years by ground one way just to get there. Two years by ground one way just to get there. Not thinking about when to get back or anything like that. That's how much they needed to be with Jesus. Now, God can do stuff with people who recognize their need. Recognize their need. Uh, and God will do stuff for them. He will meet that need. Look at verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. God, they didn't have GPS, folks. They didn't have map quest. They didn't have none of that. That's all right. God says, I got something for you. I will meet your need. You want to be with me? I will meet that need. I'll find a way to get you. 
get you there. And he sent them this star. And they followed it until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Why were they joyful? God was meeting their need. Verse 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. They came and they did what they came to do. They worshipped him. They spent time with Jesus. It didn't matter to them he was a baby. They knew he was a king. Right. And they came to see him. They knew God had directed them to that place. God met their need. You have a need in your heart today. You pour it out to God, and God will direct you where you need to be. You've got to admit to God that you have a need. And he is more than willing to meet that need. Now, when you, when you hook up with God and He meets your need, there's going to be something different about you. Look in verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. When you come to God and God meets your need, you're not going back the same way you came. That's right. Amen. He's going to meet that need and you're going to go home another way. A different way. A joy-filled way. Because your need will be met. Yes, yes. And also some of that trouble that's out there, God's going to make sure you avoid that. Because yes. Herod wasn't too happy with these guys either. God didn't care about that. God's got something for Herod. God's got some protection for his now people and his needy people. That's right. He meets that need. He doesn't let them down. And they are changed. They're going home another way. And when they go home, I bet they're going to tell people about their travels. And about the baby they saw, the star that brought them there, the angel that gave them a message and protected them. All the things that God did provide for their need. You know, God can do things with needy people. He can do great things with needy people. In Luke chapter 19, there was a needy man named Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. Nobody liked him. Nobody loved him. You think the IRS is hated now? He had to go around with soldiers when he did tax collection. Zacchaeus was also vertically challenged. He was short. And he knew he had a need. He wanted to see Jesus. And he went down there to the street because Jesus was coming through town that day. And he couldn't see over anybody, and nobody was going to make room for Zacchaeus. You go find, hey, I'm sorry about that. I'm not giving my space up for you. Zacchaeus, a tax collector, a government official, wealthy man, so dignified, had such a need in his heart that he climbed a tree. Grown man climbed a tree so that he could see Jesus just to see him when he walked by. And Jesus saw him. Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to be at your house today. You know, when you, when you admit to God that you have a need, God is going to fellowship with you and meet that need. And Jesus said, I'm going to come down to your house. You need me so much, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to come to your house. And I'm going to spend time with you and eat with you and fellowship with you. I'm going to meet your need. And Zacchaeus was a changed man from that day. There was a man in Mark chapter 2, had a knee. He was sick of the palsy. He couldn't walk, couldn't get up, was living on his bed. He had four buddies that realized he had a knee. Jesus was in town. And they figured if we get this guy to Jesus, he will meet his knee. They get him to the house. You can't get in the house. It's full. There are people there wanting to be with Jesus. They have needs too. You can't even get close. These guys, they don't care. My buddy has a need. How many of y'all have somebody that you know has a need? Yes. Has a need to get to Jesus. They pick him up. They take him up on the roof. They tear the roof off, lower him down, because he needed to get to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, your sins are forgiven. And oh, by the way, just to prove to you that I can forgive sins, you're healed too. Get up and walk. 
Jesus met his need. He recognized this man knew his own need. His buddies knew his need. He got him there. And when that guy went home, he was different than when he got there. He had to be carried there. He walked on home. Amen. Carried his bed. Probably gave it to a consignment store, used furniture store, something like that. He carried it. And, and he didn't need people to carry him no more. Because God met his need. God can do something with needy people. Are you a needy person today? You have needs in your heart. I'm telling you that Jesus can meet those needs. You take it to Him. He will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. That's the now people, and that's the needy people. Those folks make themselves available to be used of God. Now there's some other folks in this chapter not quite right with God. There's the native people. Native people want to have life their way. They don't care about God's plan. And they find themselves directly opposed and in rebellion to God's plan. Herod, in this chapter, is a negative person. Verse 3, When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Why was all Jerusalem troubled? Because Herod had killed three of his own sons because at one time he thought they might be a threat to his being king. This is how step on self this guy was. Negative people want their way in life. They don't want to have anything to do with God's way. God's plan. They want their life. They want their plan. Life is all about them. And so all Jerusalem was troubled because when Herod got troubled, usually people die. So when he got going, they were afraid. Now, negative people can even act like they can even act like they're serving the Lord. Look at verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Negative people don't have a problem with being in church, being around church, acting like church, acting like a believer. They just have a problem with God imposing his agenda on them. And so they will act like they want to worship. But really, their life is all about them. Satan is a negative person. Satan wants life his way. He doesn't want to submit to God's rule. He wanted to be worshipped as God. In Matthew chapter 4, when he's tempting Jesus, he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. He says, I'll give you all of these. I'll give them to you right now. Just bow down and worship me. Satan wants to be worshipped as God. He doesn't care about God's plan. He's got his own agenda. It's all about him. It's all about self. Folks who live their lives all about self have a really small world. And they're never satisfied. Because God didn't design life to work that way. Judas was a negative person. Now Judas walked with all the other disciples. He walked with Jesus himself for three years. And at the, at the Last Supper, when, Judas, when Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me, nobody said, hey, I bet it's Judas, because he acts different than the rest of us. <laughs> nobody said that. Everybody said, is it me, Lord? Is it me, Lord? Is it me, Lord? Judas sat there and knew it was him, because Judas saw he was concerned about the money back for all those three years. But outwardly, he looked just like everybody else. See, concerned about self. Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a negative person. Moses came down there and said, God has sent me here. God said to tell you a message. God wants you to let his people go. And Pharaoh says, who is God that I have to listen to him? I'm God. I got my own agenda. I'm going to control these people. Moses said, okay, I don't want to be standing too close to you. But guess what? God had his plan. And by the time God was through, not only were the Egyptians glad to see him go, they were shoving the people of Israel out, throwing gold and silver at them. Can I help you? Can I help you pack? Can I move you down faster? Okay? Let's clear the roads and let all these Israelites get on there. Alright? God puts down the proud. If you're standing today and God has a plan for your life and you are resisting that plan, you are resisting that call of God on your life, you are standing in the path of a negative person. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you can have the real blessings of God. You can have the real power of God on your life. Yes. But if you stand 
in opposition to God. If you play church instead of having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in dangerous ground. Don't be there. You can give in to the Lord this moment, and it'll be so sweet. It'll be so good. Don't, don't let yourself be on the negative side. Don't worry about yourself. God will take care of you. That's it. God is not sitting up there, man, I want to make this person miserable today. You know, because it just, it, God doesn't need a power trip, folks. That's it. He's got all there is. That's it. He wants to share it with you. He wants to put it to good use in your life. Don't be opposed to God. Don't be a negative person. Now, there's, there's one other group of people here. And they really, in my mind, are even sorrier than the negative people. <clears> that now people are great. And God is God is just having a great time with them. And they're enjoying His love. <clears throat> the needy people are having their needs met. And the Lord is happy to take care of them. The negative people stand in opposition to God. And He's going to put them down. But this last group of people, they're frustrated. They're pretty sorry. And they are the knowledgeable people. The knowledgeable people. The people who have the knowledge of God. Have the knowledge of the Word. Know what's right. But refuse to use that knowledge. Refuse to let God's Word you go. make a change in their life. There you go. The knowledgeable people. Let's look in verse 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together... He demanded of them where Christ should be born. Herod gets the chief priest and the scribes together. After he's heard the wise men, they said, there's a new king. Where is this new king supposed to be? Now, look in verse 5. They didn't waste any time at all giving him an answer. That's right. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, and they quote the prophet Micah. They go on verse 6, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. They knew exactly where this was supposed to happen. Yeah. They had the scriptures memorized. The chief priests and the scribes had all the knowledge in their head. They knew exactly where this new king was supposed to be born. Now imagine this. You're a preacher. You're a Bible teacher. You're a religious leader. You know there's prophecies about the Messiah coming and going to be born and do great things. And now you have wise men from another place, dressed different, look different, got a whole caravan. In this day and age, it'd probably be their own set of uh, private airplanes or some RVs or something like that. And say, we're here. We're looking for this new king. Where is he? You hear the news that this king's been born. They tell you there's been a star. Oh, maybe a couple weeks ago there were some shepherds running around town saying that there was a baby born. You hear all this. Your king asks you, where is it supposed to be? You know the prophecies. You do what? Right. So it's Absolutely nothing. You know how far it was from Jerusalem to Bethlehem? About six or seven miles. No big deal. No big deal. Not even in that day. But they didn't go. They had the knowledge. They heard the news. And they were so excited. No, I ain't going. It's not going to make a change in my life. I work for Herod. I don't want to jeopardize my career. Don't want to jeopardize my duty position. Don't want to jeopardize my social status. I am not going to let God affect my life. Yes, I know what the Bible says. Yes, I know what the scriptures say. And I know they're true. But I am not going to allow God to move me. I'm not going to let my faith actually make a difference in my everyday decisions in my life. Those are the people who know it, but they ain't put it down here. James calls them hearers of the word, but not doers. That's it. Hearers of the word, but not doers. The book of Revelation talks about the church of Ephesus. Uh -huh. And Jesus has a message for the church of Ephesus there uh, in chapter, chapter 2, verse 2 through 5. He says, Ephesus, you're a good church. 
You have stood for me. You know the truth. I know your works. You don't tolerate uh, the false teachers, but you have lost your first love. You're not in love with me anymore. You're going through the motions. You're not letting your love for the Lord actually make an effect, a change in your everyday life. You know, the chief priests and scribes probably preached. They probably heard many sermons. You know, the, the measure of a good sermon on a congregation or on an individual is not how much of it they remember word for word. Because that, that's Bible teaching is past information. A sermon preaching is about moving people to make a decision about a change in your life. So... The knowledgeable people refuse to allow God to make an effect in their everyday life. They hear the truth, they read the truth, they know the truth, but <laughs> don't be there. What a blessing they missed out on. They could have been there when they saw the wise men giving you gifts. They could have been there to worship Jesus. They could have seen these folks depart another way. They could have been on God's side. What blessings they could have had to know the Scriptures and could have gone down there to see the fulfillment of Scripture, to see prophecies fulfilled. They could have seen that. Amen. That's right. They refused to go see it because they knew it would have a change in their life. Don't be there. Don't be a knowledgeable person. You know, we get in the habit of responding when we're in the other. Last time I was in an infantry brigade, we had an SOP in our brigade. Our brigade commander had this. Every morning, right after work call, first formation, for five minutes, every E5 took whatever soldier or soldiers they had, and they did drilling ceremonies for five minutes. At ease, parade, rest, left face, right face, forward march, column left, whatever. Five minutes of drilling ceremonies. The purpose of that was so that the soldiers get used to my sergeant says and I do. And respond. My sergeant says, I do it. I respond. So when it comes time to go to war, go to combat, the sergeant says do something, soldiers respond. Mm -hmm. You know, every time you respond to God correctly, it gets easier to do it the next time. Right. And the next time. And the next time. Every time you fail to respond to God correctly, every time you resist responding to God correctly, it's easier for you to do it again the next time and the next time. And it's like being out on a PT run and fall back and that little voice in your head says you start walking. <laughs> and you walk. And then you hear the voice say, come on, pick it up again. And you start running again. But then that voice about walking picks up again. It's easier to listen to it over and over again. Get yourself in the habit of responding to God the right way. Be a now person. When God tells you something, respond to it right now. Share with God your needs and watch to see what God does to meet those needs right now. Get out of being a negative person, demanding your own way in life, because God didn't build life that way. God built life to respond to Him, be about Him. Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, and He's everything in the middle. Yes, sir. If your life is about Jesus Christ, then your life will be right, and it will be good, and you will enjoy it. Yes, if your life is about you, your life is going to be pretty small, and you will never, ever be satisfied. That's right. I counsel other people all the time. Their marriages are broke, their life is messed up, and they wonder why everybody else in the world is messed up. <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> and don't be a knowledgeable person that you know God is working on you, and you just dig it in your heels. No, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to tell nobody about Jesus. I'm not going to let this just, you know, make decisions in my life. I'm going to do what I want to do. Don't go there. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. Let's pray. Father, we're going to have a time of invitation here in a minute. We thank you for your word. On this Christmas, Lord, yes. your gift of Jesus Christ. Yes. Lord, it's because you love us. Lord, you don't tell us things. You don't work in our life because you want to make us miserable. 
Lord, you're working our life because you want to share in your love. Lord, sometimes we don't get it, but you try to love and get through us anyway. Yes. We pray your Holy Spirit would reach down, Lord. Touch hearts, touch lives. Help us to respond to you now. Help us to share our needs with you. Lord, help us to drop our own agenda, drop our own way. Help us to not be afraid anymore of letting you affect our lives. Yes, we pray, Lord, this time of invitation, that you would move people. If you're touching folks' hearts, Lord, we pray that they would respond to you and do business with you. In Christ's name, we thank you, dear Father. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Amen. We can still stay standing in here. Whatever you have bowed and every eyes closed. Thank you. If you know right now that you have a need, the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of every Sunday, it's just, because God is the reason for the season, not just today, but every day. If you have a need right now to be right with God, i.e. you know that you're not saved and you know you need to give your life to the Lord and make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. If that's you this, this afternoon, would you please just raise your hand? If you know right now that the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart, you said, you know, brother, I've been going to church now for a while and I know it's the right thing to do, so I've been coming, I've been coming faithfully, but, or maybe you haven't, it just happened to be one of those arbitrary Sundays you decided to come because you know you needed to. And you said, I don't know what it was, brother, but I just needed to come today. It was Christmas Eve, I, I had to be here. And as you listen to the word today, you realize the reason that God sent you here is because you know you need to be right with Him. If that's you this morning, would you lift your hand? Hallelujah, Jesus. I see that hand. Praise God. If you know right now that you have gotten saved, but you allow things, life 101 happened to you, and you've turned away been a knowledgeable person, but you haven't been doing what you know to do. So because of that, years, like I said, time has gone by and it's got easier and easier and easier to disobey God. It's gotten easier to go away from Him. And you're at a point right now where you're saying, is enough is enough. I'm so far away right now. I don't want to go that way anymore. So you want to be like the wise man. You want to say, look, I want to get back in the right path. I want to go another way than what I'm going. I need to be in right standing and right fellowship with God once again. If that's you this morning, would you please raise your hand and say, God, I want to rededicate my life back to you. If that's you this morning, would you lift your hands? If you have a need this morning, you've already saved and you're right with the Lord, you say, but God, I just need somebody to touch and agree with me this afternoon. I need somebody to touch and agree with me. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two ten thousand to flight. I need an extra power, if you will, to get this burden, this yoke destroying thing off of me. If that's you this morning, you just need somebody to touch and agree with the need that you may have this morning. The altar is open and I invite you to come this morning.
give your life to the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. got a new, you know, baby girl, a baby boy born into the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just let you know, you know, David said, even if I make my bed in hell, God is still in the mix. So even if I'm in the States, or whether I'm at Fort Bragg, or Hawaii, or wherever my home station is, or whether I'm in Iraq, God is still God, no matter where I may be, the geographical location, amen? So no matter where I go in life, I know my God is there. So therefore, as long as He's there, if I have a need, the ability, the capacity to have that need met is also there as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank, thank you, Chaplain, for delivering the word. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Now, it's, it's funny, though, how you know the Holy Spirit brings confirmation. For those of you who have been going here the last couple of Sundays, he basically preached everything we've been saying now for the last month. Particularly the last couple of Sundays, this brother got up and said, you know, it's not like enough just to know the word. Now that you know the word, you got to apply and work out what you know. Amen. And he came back and said, you just can't be knowledgeable. Now that you're knowledgeable, you know, my father in faith says this, that to know better is to do better. So now that we know better, we have to apply what we now know. Amen. Amen. Sir, that was so in line and so in tune with what the Holy Spirit is doing here. That's it. It is just awesome. Amen. 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 Praise God. Before we go and fetch the faith, let us pray. We'll go right into that. Praise God. Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name, God. We, we thank you for two people. Souls are now being saved. Lives are now being changed. They're leaving your God another way, God. Because you have met them on this way in Tom Spiker, Iraq. We thank you, God, for taking time, oh God, to be your God. Have us agenda, God, to save the souls and the lives of men and women. We thank you, oh God, dear God. Now that we pray that they're saved, we rebuke any to do any. In the nation, anything that God is against you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that your guardian angels will be around them, oh God. Guard their mind, guard their heart, oh God, guard their souls, oh God, so they can now soak up like a sponge the things of God, oh Lord, so they can grow and mature and be disciples, oh God, in you. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing right now, what you've already done, and what you will do in the future. We pray you continue to have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Give God a good prayer. Let's <laughs> to declare what God has said about us and what God has said concerning our circumstances. I'm a child, child of God. God and I am blessed. blessed. I am blessed in the city. And I am blessed in the fields. I am blessed going in. And I am blessed, blessed coming out. And what is your name? My relationship with God is prosperous. My prosperous words is my growth in Him as He is in me. I am above all the drama around me through God's strength. I am the head and not the tail. I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. No weapon, no weapon, that is more against me shall prosper. Sickness and disease are rebuked in the name of Jesus. Divorce, death, crisis, gossip, lies shall not prosper. Satan, I serve you no notice. You are powerless and useless and an opportunity in my life. I speak life into my life. I speak life into my relationships. I speak life into my family. I speak life into my career. I speak life into my surroundings. And having done all I can do on this I stand on God's word with the Lord and the truth, with the rest of the Christ. With the deep shot and the preparation of God for peace, with the shield of faith, with the helmet of salvation, and with the souls of the Spirit, the Word of God, I decree it, declare it, for I'm a child of God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank God, amen. I give God praise. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all still blessed by the best? Yes. Amen. I mean, y'all still blessed by the best? Yes. yes. Amen. Praise God. As we leave this place, but obviously, hopefully never from God's presence, amen, we're going to pray that God continues to be on, on us and as we continue to have a Merry Christmas, amen. Yes. Just uh, remember that Jesus is not only the reason for the season, but he's the reason for every single day of our lives, yes. amen. Yes. Paul says he's the reason that we live and breathe and move and have our being. Have our being. Amen. 
So everything that's about us is about Christ. Like the chaplain said, when what point is having faith, amen, it doesn't affect every decision that we make. Amen? So if a person has faith, we must live by faith. Amen? amen? And oh, by the way, if you just got saved today, please see Chaplain Murray before you leave this place. And Sister Cheeks, amen, so we can get you in that new believers class. Amen? Because like the brother said, now that you are now birthed into the kingdom, you got to know what's going on. Yes. Amen? Because it can be very overwhelming. You hit with all this church stuff and terminology and this and that. God, what in the heck did I get myself into? Well, praise God. That's what those classes are for, to help you understand what you just got into. Amen? amen. That way you're not, you know, you're, now you're knowledgeable, then you can apply what you know. Amen? Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, once again for this time, the opportunity to come and, and worship you during this, this, this service of God, this worship experience, this worship opportunity. We thank you, God, for you coming in and touching lives and touching hearts and people rededicating their lives. We've got people getting saved. And for the people that are saved, that you, you met their need, oh God. They were needy and you spoke to them some kind of way. We pray, oh God, now as we leave this place, that your guardian angels be around us, oh God. Lead us and guide us in the path that we should go. Order our steps, oh God, in your word. And we all pray, oh God, that we'll go down the right path that you have chosen for us. And we pray, oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, and we give you the praise. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Hug somebody. Tell me love them. You're right. I love you, man.